Hey everyone, thanks for joining Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and today I'm looking at a brand new game on Kickstarter called Wizards and Relics. This is a new one from Eternal Realms. It is a two to four player game that takes roughly 20 to 40 minutes to play, and is a competitive game where the players are competing with each other to try to get the most points during the round so they can enter their wizard into the Hall of Immortality. So in the game itself, during each round, the players are going to reveal a new shrine that is going to give certain powers or bonuses to certain types of wizards. From there, the players are going to be playing one wizard and one relic from their hand to try to get the most points during that round, and the player that is able to accomplish that will get to move their wizard into the Hall of Immortality. And throughout the rounds, the players are trying to be the first to get a certain number of wizards into the Hall of Immortality, depending upon the number of players. And the player that is able to do this first is going to be the winner of the game. So in this video, I'm going to show you the main features of the game, and then I'm also going to show you a sample round. As always, if you find these videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button subscribe to my channel. It's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow and produce this content. If you want to stay in all my videos, also consider that bell so you get notifications anytime I release new stuff. So let's go ahead and head to the table and find out what this one's all about. There are three different types of cards in the game the players are going to be using. The first type are the wizards, and these are the cards the players are trying to get into the Hall of Immortality. There are three different types of wizards, blue wizards, green wizards, and red wizards. And then there are three different levels. We have common wizards, superb wizards, and glorious wizards. The wizards are all going to have a power level, and as you get into the higher levels, you'll notice they get more and more powerful. And then some of the wizards are also going to have abilities that will trigger when revealed or under other circumstances. The second type of card are the relic cards, and these are broken down into three levels as well, common, superb, and glorious. Each relic is going to provide the player with a power, and some will have enchantments that will give the player some other type of bonus or perk or effect. And the final type of card are the shrines. At the beginning of each round, you're going to reveal a new one, and each shrine is going to list one or more colors that it's going to give a benefit to to each player that plays a wizard of that color. For example, with a Sanctum of the Mind, it's going to give plus one power to each player that plays a blue wizard. Or if we go over here, you're going to get a benefit if you play a green wizard, and you'll get a different benefit if you play a red wizard. There's also a small element of rock, paper, scissors in this. As you can see in this diagram, depending upon the wizard you play, each wizard is going to get a benefit or advantage over another type of wizard. So for example, with the red wizards, they get advantage against green wizards. Green wizards get advantages against blue wizards. And blue wizards will get advantages against red wizards. That advantage translates into a plus one to that wizard's power if they're going against their rival wizard. And the final thing I want to show you is a sample round. So first off, each round is going to be broken down into five phases that are done in order. The first phase in each round is the shrine phase where you're going to reveal the top shrine card. And so we have the Sanctum of Breath, and this is going to give a plus one to each player that plays a green wizard. From there, then we're going to move into the play phase where each player is going to look from their hands and choose a wizard and a relic to play face down in front of them. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my player over here to look at his cards. And I definitely want to play a green wizard. I have a couple to choose from. So I think I'm going to play this one here. And then I am going to play, I think I'll play this standard scroll. Is this going to give me a plus one? And it lets me draw two cards and then I can discard a card. So that player will play those. And then we're going to go over to this guy. And all he has is red wizards. So I think I'm going to go with this one here. And I'm going to, I think I'm going to bank on the other player playing a green wizard. So I'm going to play this one, which gives me a bonus against green. So I'll play that. Once all the players have all of their cards down, then we'll move into the third phase, which is the reveal phase, where each player is going to simultaneously reveal their wizard first, and then we're going to check and see if we have any advantages. So my green wizard only gets advantages against blue wizards, and the red wizards do get an advantage against green, so they're going to, this player over here will gain an advantage of plus one. Then next we're going to check for the shrine and that's going to give plus one to each player that plays a green wizard. So I get plus one for that. Then starting with the master wizard, which in the first round can be any player that the players choose, which will be this player. In subsequent rounds, it'll always be the player that won the previous round. So with the master wizard, you're going to resolve the effects on his card first and then move clockwise around the, the board. So first off, with this one, it says each rival must exchange their relics in play 
with one from their hand if they're able to. So this player will have to take this relic back into his hand and choose another one. And as he can see that this other player and him are pretty much tied right now, he needs to play a strong relic. So I'm going to go ahead and play this superior sword instead and see if I can get lucky there. Then we'd move over to this player who doesn't have an ability. So once that is done, then each player is going to simultaneously reveal their relics. And then we will carry out the effects of each relic, again, starting with the Master Wizard. So with this one, it's a plus one, and he can draw two cards into his hands, and then he has to discard one. So I think I'm going to go ahead and drop this wizard here, and that'll finish off that. And then again, this player's relic does not have an effect, so then we'll move into the victory where we're going to total up all of the points and see which player has the most. So I have one five six and this one has four five seven so this player has one and so with that he gets some spoils so all players are going to discard first down to seven cards in their hands and then the winner can choose to either take the loser's relic or they can draw a card from their deck so this player doesn't really want that card so he's just simply going to draw a card from his deck and then he also gets to place his wizard into the hall of immortality and then the rest of the cards will be discarded to those players' discard piles. From there, the round is going to start again, where the players are going to go through the five steps. And this is going to continue until one of the players is able to get the allotted number of their wizards into their Hall of Immortality. And that player will be the winner of the game. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Or swing by the Kickstarter's main page and drop any questions you have there as well. I'm sure the creators would love to hear from you and I'm more than happy to answer any questions you have. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on them. I do really appreciate it and take into account everything you say to make the best possible videos. And until next time, I'll see you later.